Hello, and welcome to Bertrand's Forgotten Tomb, a Thief 2 fan mission by Trefoil Not. Doesn't have a briefing, so uh, I will read out the uh, text briefing. In the years following the collapse of the Precursors, a young lad named Bertrand of unsurpassed wit quickly ascended the ranks of the newly founded Hammerite Order. In his youth, Bertrand used his keen intellect to create great inventions, propelling a new age of scientific enlightenment. It was Bertrand who discovered the means of creating hammers out of metal rather than stone, and it was Bertrand's innovations in architecture and design that allowed the Hammerites to build towering cathedrals, the likes of which the world had never seen. It wasn't long before Bertrand amassed a great deal of power and wealth. But Bertrand became bored. As with most great minds, he yearned for stimulation, for inspiration, for challenge. Over the years, he withdrew from his practical endeavours, stopped inventing, and began to pursue increasingly abstract ideas. He became obsessed with the concept of self-reference. Quite by accident, his study of self-reference led him to a startling discovery. The inconsistency of logic itself. Of all the qualities Hammerites hold dear, logic, order, and consistency top the list. But Bertrand, scoundrel as he was, decided to thumb his nose at Hammerite sensibilities and publish his work. His findings provoked immediate ire from the Hammerite Order, who took Bertrand's demonstration of logical inconsistency as heresy of the highest degree. Sensing his fate, Bertrand fled with all his most prized possessions and sequestered himself inside a nearby tomb. To ensure his safety, he barricaded himself inside the High Priest's mausoleum, using a cleverly devised system of locked gates to prevent access to any but the most keen of mind. It is said that he designed the gates to open only to those who truly understood and appreciated his life's work. Despite numerous attempts, no one has ever made it past even a single gate. As he neared the end of his life, the story goes, Bertrand transferred his very essence into a large codex, where he awaits a worthy adventurer with whom to share his wisdom. Generations passed, and the tomb was lost to time. As the city developed, the tomb was buried deep underground and forgotten, hidden under centuries of urbanization. It has been over 500 years since anyone has had any contact with the tomb at all. That is, until a pair of careless workmen blew a hole in the sewers, exposing and flooding the tomb's lowest level. Taffus. If this is indeed Bertrand's legendary tomb, it's bound to be full of some valuable trinkets. Bertrand's fabled Ouroboros of self-reference would be sure to fetch a hefty price tag. And I wouldn't mind taking a peek inside that codex myself. The entrance to the tomb has been cordoned off by city officials, but that won't be a problem for someone with my skills. I'd better get in there and claim what's mine before my competition catches wind. Let us begin now. Difficulty levels. Um, well, I'll pick it at the, at the briefing screen, at the objective screen. Um, okay, no difference in the text. A little difference in loot goal. Uh, the other big difference is that. Being a puzzle-oriented mission, the difficulty levels control the level of hints that you get. So, normal is apparently quite generous with the hints. Hard has very few, and on expert, there are no free hints, it says. So maybe maybe I can spend hard and loot to get hints if I need it. I'm gonna go expert. I don't want hints. Well, I don't want free hints. So, uh, maybe I'll need them, but I don't want them, you know. My pride, like Garrett, uh, too prideful to ask for help. Rumour has it, this is Bertrand's forgotten tomb. If so, it likely holds one of the world's most fabled objects, Bertrand's Ouroboros of self-reference. Now, let's stop there a second. How can you have an Ouroboros that's not of self-reference? I feel that, and I feel that's difficult. This is an opportunity no self-respecting master thief would pass up. Find Ouroboros and make it yours. The, Ubor the Ouroboros will be worth a fortune, but it could take some time to line up a buyer. In the meantime, you'll need more, some more liquid assets. 2900 should do it. Fat lot of good all that loot will do if you can't make it back out. Escape back to the city streets through the sewers when you've got what you came for. A curiosity like the Codex of Bertrand's Essence would surely fetch a nice price, if it even exists. You should try to get your hands on it, if you can. Optional. Well, we're definitely going to try it. Alright, let's way back out to the city streets, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, look at the mess they made of this place. It's terrible. Just careless workmen here. Anyway. One thing I should look forward. Do you know it's a tomb that might be loot anywhere? Well, there doesn't seem to be any down the backs of those places. Let's uh, catch my breath again and descend. That's a sound. I know that sound. That's a bad sound. Oh, hello. There's a clock and two scrolls and a gold vase. Unfortunately. There's even wooden beams, perfect rope arrows, but uh, without a place to stand, um, not going to be able to buy a rope arrow. Let's stay quiet here. Sounds like there's a hammer haunt haunting that corridor. Yeah, underwater room transitions are real. Yes. Don't know if there's a way to stop it. Um, I hear uh, jingling chains again. So you know, a little bit of loot, 230 so far. Now, I was going to say, do I waste my rope arrows? Now, I see something up there in that ledge. I don't see a. It's surely too high for a rope arrow, isn't it? It will be waste. Uh, will it be wasted? Maybe it can drop into the water, actually. If I fire it into the middle, maybe I'll just grab it and fall safely into the water. Who knows? Maybe it will be wasted anyway. Uh, kind of looks out of reach. There's a slight ledge here. I don't think it's going to be enough. Did I save before doing that? Hmm. Looks like that might be just... I'm a little leery of making too much noise and uh, alerting that fine fellow to my presence. Oh, I can get up there. In theory, the door is such a thin thing to mantle onto. There we are. All right. Now I can get to the rope. Now, we can show how much of a master thief we are and make it to the rope on the very first try. You might not think that was the very first try, but you would be wrong. Uh, I hope there's nothing on those beams because there's no way I'm going to be able to get to it if so. I will take that. Hmm. You know what? I might be able to check if there's something on those beams. With a second rope. If only got two ropes, what could be better than using both of them? Aha! Definitely worth my while. Alright. Grab that one. And, uh... Whee! Nice and soft, this water. Alright. Hmm. 
Not that that's in the way of darkness here. Didn't even stop to check my equipment. I do have some water arrows. Oh, hello, here he comes. Let's put those arrows away. As long as I stay down, crouch through the corner, he shouldn't see me. Yeah, good. Six water arrows, four moss arrows, two ropes. That's all, all right. Up and down here, does he? Yep, just up and down, up and down. He's got nothing better to do. I didn't even check this thing I just walked past on this side. Uh, I could put him out of his. Eternal unrest, you know. Maybe I should. Oh, that's just a torch. Let's not waste my moss on this. I'm just going to try and sneak across here when his back is turned and hope for the best. Grab that loot in a minute when he's on the way back up. Or not. Where's my sword? No, nope, too late. Alright. Change of plan. We're gonna put him out of his eternal misery. There you are, sir. You may now rest quietly in peace in the water. <laughs> or not in the water, that'll do. Oh yeah, ah, peace and quiet, none of that infernal jingling. And it was literally infernal jingling. Oh, there's more of them. And that looks like a very clanky floor. Puzzle mission, he says. And just throws hammer haunts at us with willful abandon. I mean, this is worse. This is more hammer haunts than you see right at the beginning of uh, Return to the Cathedral, even. Maybe that's just haunt sounds everywhere to, to mess with me. Does... Hmm, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if I trust it. Uh, well, we'll have to check down that, down that end of the alcove. Let's... Normally there's the jingling as well, right? The chains. Okay, this looks... Like we'll need our friend Lady Mossy to help us out. Oh god, there's another another doorway, you know what? Time that better. Hmm. 
It sort of had some more jingles there. I've got chains <coughs> that jingle, jingle, jingle. Is that haunt? Hello. Oh, I thought there was maybe a way over the top of the doorway. Apparently not. So many incredibly high wooden beams, although I'm seeing a raised series of Shooting objects that could perhaps be climbed upon. Alright, somebody is coming kind of from that direction. Before I try any more climbing, which might get me death by falling or by making too much noise, maybe I should be about whether I can uh, dispose of this fella. These hammerheads are so careless, leaving so many undead spirits wandering in their tombs. There's another piece of loot there by the statue I had not seen. Perfect. You guys can <coughs> sleep together in undead bliss. Right, can I make it up on top of that? I can just. Okay. Feels very new mantle. <laughs> uh, but. Oh, I guess if I, again, if I put a rope in the middle. I don't know if I can make it to it, though. <gasps> careful. Oh. Carrot, when I say careful, I mean careful. <gasps> I'll take my fall damage. Uh, so I think I think if I go one further, I will not be able to jump high. Ah! All right. <sighs> what was I saying about about ropes? I didn't put the rope in. I guess if I make it to the statue, I can put the rope in from there. Damn! I don't know why he's not jumping. That does not feel very master thiefy. Yeah, that's never, I'm never gonna make that, am I? Way too far a distance. Can I even make it back to this one? What? What just happened there? That's very weird. Okay. I haven't wasted the rope. There's got to be something up there. I mean, that's way too tempting, but I don't see how. Even that little bit of extra height isn't going to be good enough, is it? No, the distance is just too far. I feel like it was well. I was falling and landing here. I wasn't even getting near the statue. So, unless I can resolve the distance, I don't know. What happened just here? What am I standing on right now? Uh. What? Hang on. <gasps> Might reload this because this is now <laughs> trying to understand something weird that's happening. <clears throat> there is a little invisible bit next to that. But, like, it, this is very weird. I just come here and I'm standing on nothing. 
What? And then I'm suddenly on the... Oh, this is bizarre, okay. I don't, I don't understand at all what's going on there. Okay, well, maybe that's uh, some weird part of a puzzle. Maybe that's some weird broken geometry. Uh, what is this? Looks creepy. Oh, it doesn't look like traps behind there, just torches, okay. Ah, I recognize this room. But, there's a clever gate. Clever gate to get through, okay. Well, I haven't even finished exploring that way and it's giving me more to, more to go this way. It feels like we're going deeper, but... Oh, well, we're not the dead end gate, okay. Right, this one... I'm not sure if I trust that floor. It's got a lock anyway. It's got uh, some something very weird going on in it. We'll be back. Someone's put a nice little marble tile marble circle in the ceiling. The entire roof is written with unreadable scribblings. Cool. All right. Do I go up? It's a long way up. I suppose I'm here now. I probably should. Hello. The Hall of Projection Key. Dad Adventurer's Notes. And he died with his ribcage separated from his spine. That must have hurt. I've been here for days, but still no luck. I can see Bertrand in there, taunting me. Yet I simply can't figure out how to get through those blasted gates. Hopefully the haunts won't find me here. I'll bide my time and then scour the place again, see if I can find some more clues. Alright, well that doesn't seem helpful, so I will leave it with a skeleton and I can come back and find it if I decide I need to. It's a long stairway. Do I keep going up or... Uh, we've got one door there. We are almost at the top. This isn't quite Hilbert's high-rise hotel levels of height. We have another doorway here. Seems pretty reasonably safe. Hello. Hmm. Oh, I see you there, Mr. Golden Thingy. First things first. Loot. Let's try it this way. Okay, Alright, when I press the jump... Yeah. When I press jump, you should jump. When I press jump, you should jump or mantle. Okay, that'll do. All right, we have seven levers for gate three. Nine button, the uh, ten buttons rather for gate one. And this remarkable construction for gate two. So I guess this is where Bertrand sequestered himself. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think just... I don't know what the combinations will be. I don't think just prodding the random is going to help anything. Wouldn't be much of a puzzle mission if the answer was just prod the buttons at random. Um, although he would be a very good troll if, if that was actually the solution. However, I was going to say something else about this. It kind of... And I'm pretty sure it's supposed to remind me of something else. Um, mathematical, but it actually kind of reminds me of... What was it? There was a guy in the Quake mapping community and who worked on Thief 2. And the initial release of Thief 2 in the very first mission, the one with Basso and Genevieve, 
down in the basement behind the pile of crates was uh, he had left a brushwork symbol, kind of shaped like that. That was his kind of calling card. And they, uh, in the 1.18 patch, they removed it and replaced it with just a big metal gear. As if the guy was, like, secretly worshipping a mechanist icon, which didn't make any sense. But well, whatever. Oh, hello. Goodbye. Oh, that's not good. Well, are you in this time, Mr. Haunt? Yeah, there's the torches right above me there. So he doesn't patrol very far. Maybe he does, actually. <laughs> Here lies Sir Brother Benark. I guess that must be his fellow knight. Hammerite knight Sir Brother Tarski over there. It's funny. They've been divided, and yet... They still, they add up to two complete copies. I mean, that's... Yep, Brother Tarski. Indivisible in life. Divided in death. And yet, remained whole. Assistance room key, okay. You gonna be alright there? You don't have anything hidden there, okay. Assistance room? Hall of projection? This is very strange. Did, did Bertram build this to himself? I feel like normal low. Oh, this is shaped like that symbol. Exactly like that symbol. Brother Erdos. Well, start coming here at zero. There's a brewer. Oh, you know that name. Must be an, this, an ancient... Uh, what's the word? Ancestor, that's one. Of, um... The guy in Hilbert's hotel. Here lies Sir Brother Russell. Oh, we came in. Sir Brother Cantor. Did he recant or not? Sir Brother Hilbert. I have, I have a million names. Sir Brother Girdle. Well, I, um, I imagine if we could open his tomb, we would find his body partly missing. All right. What I know is that I do not know enough. We need some logic, even if it is incomplete and contradictory. We definitely need some more information. So I'm going to go back down to where we started, because there's another passageway there I did not explore. Which way was it? This way. Still want to know how I'm supposed to be able to reach that. Uh, do I want to try climbing up here? I kind of don't, but I kind of should. After all, I have all this loot to get. At least this one is within rope distance. Hmm. Too far to jump. Can't hear the chains. Oh, is this just the end? I thought this was actually another actual passageway to go down. Well, 
Right, this is the actually the, the entire end of the place. All right. So, uh, can we reach that by jumping? Not from that side. Boy, should be to try. Yeah, just. Uh, long arm of the law is not as long as the arm of Garrett. And why am I coming here, actually? This is a pretty good question. Can I actually see anything? I mean, I'm kind of coming up here because it kind of feels like I should, but I also can't see any reason to. I'm going to keep trying it, though. You don't put beams like this and expect me, expect any thief not to try it. Although the whole bouncing off to your death thing is a potential problem. Families are coming. The ropes are coming down low enough that, that it's, I'm not actually needing. Uh, I'm not actually needing them. This one I might. Good, good, good. All right. Um, I guess we'll forget that. We'll just. Uh, well, but uh, what else are we gonna do? All about death. Okay, Garrett. Can you climb onto that rope for me? Ah! Nope. Oh, well, this is a pretty pickle. All right, well, we'll try this again. We should be able to make it onto the rope and maybe just bounce off relatively safely, I hope. Ah! All right, I don't know how I was able to do it before and cannot do it now. Maybe it had a little more forward speed. Uh, well done, Garrett. This is where I needed to go. I'd forgotten it existed. The quest before you is no easy task. Help is provided to those who ask. But if you want my aid today, there is one thing that I must say. Know that nothing in life comes free. A lesson you'll learn most painfully. If I were you, I'd turn and run. I think you'll find it much more fun. But if you're sure I'll accept your plea, behind Brother Banak, you'll find the key. So says Mr. Stewart. Right, that's the painful, that's the hint room of pain, is it? Um, I do not have any healing items, do I? I'm just wondering about whether I leave the repair there or not. I mean, I don't... Honestly, I don't know if I have much choice. Do we go to the Hall of Assistance, even painful as it will be? This is just the way we came in, right? The Hall of... Oh, sorry, Assistance Room. Where is the Hall of Projection? I haven't even found the locked door. Oh, yes, I have. Hang on, let's... The, the passageway with the floor that I thought looked suspiciously like a trap. Over here. Well, no, was it this one? No, it wasn't this one. Although this is kind of projection, isn't it? It was this one, I think. Yeah. Well, I said I don't trust the floor, but it seems fine. Oh my god, we've got a, uh, well, a lot of stuff happening there. We've also got Hang on, hang on. <laughs> a recursive floor. How, just how small does that go? There's even, there are, I can't see beyond that, then, but even that tiny little square, checkered square right in the middle of the screen has two statues on it. Well, this is the two I can just zoom in with my eyes, right? 
Ah, uh, yeah. And there's another tiny chicken square under that. Wow. And of course it keeps going. We stand right at the point of infinite recursion. Or not. Four, nine, three, seven. I think we have a code. Now, unfortunately, I knew there was a puzzle of that nature in this mission. I didn't know where it was or why, um, but I got spoiled by the Inside at Last podcast. Um, I tried to avoid all spoilers for this mission, but unfortunately I couldn't quite. And uh, I did learn... So, consequence... Oh, I just can't jump very high. <laughs> I can reach the gate from up there. Well, we wouldn't want anyone else to learn what we know. Our competitors. Uh, yeah, so I tried to avoid all spoilers for this mission, but I couldn't quite... Um, I skipped the part where they were actually talking about the mission, but they kept bringing it up again, and brought up that puzzle and mentioned enough that I knew it was a matter of perspective. And, you know... And then seeing those things there, then it was immediately obvious. Also, I recently played another puzzle game called Lock. Um, which had a couple of puzzles of exact, that exact nature. So, um, you know what, mate? We're not going to have lots of readables. I'm going to, I'm going to hang on to that. And you know what? Bones. Let's bring your bones with us. You may not get to see Russell, but perhaps we can leave your bones with him as some kind of tribute to your adventuring spirit. Right, that was uh, Cantor and Van Ark and Tarski and friends. All right, well, we have some digits. What was it? 4937. Well, that is gate one. In. Hmm. Okay, now this one, I have no idea what it's for. This is gate three, right? Gate two, though, this is clearly the same pattern as the two we're in. So, uh, what, it's like a Y, Y, and then a plus. We kind of have a Y up there, a Y up there. There's a plus down here, and then there's kind of a lines between like this. I'm just going to sketch out very roughly. And the reason is there's buttons at the intersections. So there's a button there, there's a button there. Um, one in the middle of the cross, one at the top of it, and one's on either side. So like there's one there, one there, one there, and one there. Well, I guess it's the middle of the cross. I'll put it there, and I'll just just like mark it, mark that cross bit a bit more explicitly, I suppose. There we go. Look at my beautiful thief artwork. Let's go see if those buttons correspond to anything in that lower floor. One here between Ben Ark and Tarski. Oh, they're green, orange, hello, the different floor colours. So that's green. Oh, let's put it here. Green. Well, you know what? We can actually remove some of the ones we don't want. Green. Orange. Go to the left, it's blue. Go this way, it's red. Blue, red. I'm actually going to get rid of the Ys because they might be uh, confused with Y for yellow. Probably not. It might not be yellow. 
white and purple. Is that right? Maybe we ought to also note who's buried in each area just in case. We have Cantor and I think it was Russell here. No, Cantor and Hilbert. Um, down here in the white we've got Girl. In the blue we have Erdos. Up here in the red, Brewer and this is Russell. Oh, I think I got that wrong. Otis was in the blue. Right. Uh, here, Brewer, Russell. Let's see, Russ. And orange is nobody, and green is Benakataski. Nobody's buried in the orange, so maybe the orange is the old one out. I don't know. Careful, Garrett. Don't, don't race off an edge like that. The other adventurer should warn you of, of the dangers of flying downstairs. Um, that's not even the way I wanted to go. I, did, I noticed it before, but I didn't comment it out. Is that all these pillars have different bases, right? This has got wood on bottom. That's got white stone, red brick, white marble. A grayer stone, green, and orange. In fact, that's kind of purpley, isn't it? Well, we've got brown and gray here. We don't quite have green, blue. We had seven colors here, right? One, two, three, four, five, no, six. Red, purple. Well, we have seven here. It doesn't seem. Particularly, particularly relevant or anything, but let me just, you know, if somebody makes a wooden pillar, it behooves a thief <laughs> to see if there's a reason to come up here. What would you know? It is, and it's going to be a little hard to get to. There we go. Also, having played uh, the Sunken Temple of Delia, I know that Trifoil not likes to hide loot in awkward to access places I up. Um, how do we get in here? This room seems important. I wonder... Can I shoot through the bars? Aha! Take that! How do I get up there? I have no idea. Hopefully it's just loot and hopefully I don't need it. I got 2050 and I need 2900. Maybe I will need it. Right, well, let's go back to the underwater room and see if we can climb up that rope. And we can take this friend with us. Well, we can leave him down here. Don't, I don't actually need to take him with us. Ouch. Oops. Oh, I see you couldn't climb because of the roof. Alright. There we are. Once you arrive in the lair of dead knights, you'll do well to recall what prisms do to lights. So says Mr. Stewart. Peculiar poem? The home of a man tells of virtue and vice. 
These tales aren't subtle, no need to look twice. The greedy man builds out of marble and gold, for all he holds dear can be bought or be sold. The strong man resides inside mortar slash brick, while the weak builds a home with wood two inches thick. Out of iron and stone does the wise man create a home that will stand up to time and ill fate. The wicked man doesn't build any home at all, he lives out in nature to heed the trickster's call. Very peculiar. Another peculiar poem. Journey to stand upon a point of self-reference, then carry my favour with a demonstration of deference. If you heed these requests but you can't find the clues, search the stars to behold more enlightening views. Right, that's the clue to the uh, perspective place. You stand on the point of infinite self-reference, the infinite recursion, recursing point of the floor, and look up at the crouch and look up at the stars, yes. All right, well, I'm going to take my... Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to take my route back. I do need to take my route back. We have to go the long way around to get back in there, but we've opened the door, so that should be fine. Because I want to check on top of those wooden beams as well. After all. You give me rope arrows. I will use them. Sometimes to my detriment. Often to my detriment. Hello. Did I mention rope arrows? Or well, maybe that's just to help me get past. Oh, I see. No loot. Not even a smidgen. But it is a dark place to hide from uh, Mr. Thing. With marble underneath. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know how you're supposed to sneak past. I guess put a moss arrow. You got moss arrows. Um, where was that room? That's the room of assistance down there, which... Right, we were up this way. Um, in here, in here, right. Where is a good place? I guess, again, I want it above the water so I can drop off it safely. I don't know if I'll need my rope arrow again, but... It's my last one. <laughs> really? Really? No loot at all. Shame. Alright. Uh, save, because this might not go well. Even though there's water, I might miss it. Something weird. Falling off. Oh! Let's try that again. That's all right, I'll take that. Slowly creeping onto the rope. All right. So we have a peculiar poem which is telling us something about something. You frustrate me, annoying statue. Although, I'm wondering, right? Given there's some kind of invisible solid next to that or something weird going on. That's been very weird going on for my movement, but that might just be the normal uh, jitter. I am wondering, I will try going back up there to the um, <laughs> the highest one of those. Because <laughs> I didn't even try going here before, right? What if... What if that didn't kill me? Right, forget it. So... Well... Where's that peculiar poem? Uh, virtue and vice. Greedy is babble and gold. Blah, 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 blah. 
the iron and stone does the wise man create a home that will stand up to time and ill fate well hang on so look at these right we've got marble and gold that's marble that's gold strong man in mortar and brick just here Weak build the home with wood two inches thick. This is weak. Uh, iron and stone. Well, that's stone, but I don't see iron. Is this iron? Well, that's not going to be able to tell, am I? Um, does the wise man create a home that will stand up to time and ill fate? The wicked man doesn't build any home at all. This is clearly trying to communicate something to me. But I don't know what. The ones on that side all have to watch us, the ones on this side don't. Oh! There are seven pillars. There are seven pillars arranged four across this side, three down this side, which I think is the arrangement of the things. So we get wood, marble, iron question mark, gold, I think, all across the top. And here stone, brick, and stone, brick, and grass, I suppose. And uh, we, I guess, iron and stone is what we need. Is we need to pull iron and stone levers. I guess that is the next one to try. All right. Now uh, that's the tombs. It's the next level. Here we are. Yep. So iron and stone is. The third one along the top and first one on the bottom. No. Um. Or maybe it isn't the the wise man we need. He gets two lines. It seems important. Well, we're greedy, right? Let's try marble and gold. Nothing. All right. Well, let's look at this. This was the only button that what didn't have, the only area that didn't have anyone buried in it. Nothing. Uh, oh, hang on. The other one was talking about what like the prisons. So why is it white though? Or maybe it's supposed to be yellow and it was just like not very it didn't look very yellow in the yellow torch light. I don't know. Let's assume it is. Let's go let's go this way. That's gate two, okay. Gate three. Gonna have some bones. Can they actually fit through there? No, it's not big enough. All right. Peculiar poem. Virtue and vice. Hmm. Well, maybe we should try turning all of them off except iron and stone. I'm having to guess at which one's iron, but... Nope. Uh, that's not the thing. Yes, yeah, so the tells aren't subtle. Oh, a man of virtue and vice. Well, hang on. <sighs> Is he strong and wise? Mortar, brick, and iron and stone, maybe. Maybe. 
self referential that's definitely uh what's the word self deferential clever you must be for having made it this far your skills are quite clearly a cut of a far but if the treasure beyond your heart does desire strength and wisdom alone are what you require Um, that shouldn't have happened, right? I did just save. Okay, it's not actually locked. Uroboros of self-reference, and he has done it again. Although it doesn't seem to go further than that this time. And there is the codex, and... Thankfully, the loot goal is easy to fulfill. Uh, so, is it is loot above the statue? It is not something I need. All right. Very much in the spirit of Bertrand's obsession. See if you can solve this two-part meta question. Choose which lights to light and which to leave black, so that you answer the queries on each plaque. Oh. <laughs> Another infinitely recursive flaw. Alright, uh, what have we got? To open the fire gate. In this larger box, what fraction of the lights are illuminated? To open the near gate. In this smaller box, how many of the lights are illum illuminated? Well, we could say... Zero is... Currently correct, right? Zero are illuminated. One would leave two illuminated. Two would leave five. Um, six. I oh, know we can't do zero, right? That's oh, right. Three would be five. Four would be four. That sounds good. Yes. All right. And how many? In this large box, what fraction of the lights are illuminated? Uh, well, that's a really good question. How many are there? And does the slash actually count? Let's just let's just try. The slash does not light up. Okay. So we have twenty-one lights in total, and we have four of them lit right now, and we will have more. Because the smaller box is inside the larger box, and it is important. So, how many do we need? Um, I didn't expect to come into this mission having to do maths. Oh, hello. You've been through this before. You know the drill. If you need a hint, ask away at your will. But let me remind you, in case you forgot, if you're averse to pain, perhaps you should not. Now you've been warned, I'm here at your service, so go ahead and ask, no need to be nervous. Even with my help, this one might give you pause. But those who solve it are worthy of applause. To answer the enigma of the two nested boxes, you'll need to be as clever as all the world's foxes. Through a triptych of puzzles, you've shown your IQ, so don't give up now, I've got faith in you. Bertrand's essence awaits just after these gates, eager to share his wisdom with worthy playmates. Is that probable or what? Not highlighting the statue. Uh, right, so. There's a total of 21 lights. So, the resulting fraction has to be out of 7 or out of 3. Uh, in terms of... Well, let's go for 3. It seems easy to make fractions out of. We'll try that first. So that gives us... The three has got five, and the four has got four, that's nine. We need to get it to a multiple of three, right? In that case, wait, but that is now... I guess we need to get it to a multiple of seven. How many do we have? Nine. 
Uh, the next multiple of 7 is 14, which would be 2 out of 3, so that would need 5 more. And a 2 is made out of 5 pieces. Perfect. Do not be deceived. Every statement on this page is a lie. Only the fool would take trouble to verify that his sentence was composed of 10 A's, 3 B's, 4 C's, 4 D's, 46 E's, 16 F's, 4 G's, 13 H's, 15 I's, 2 K's, 9 L's, 4 M's, 25 N's, 24 O's, 5 P's, 16 R's, 41 S's, 37 T's, 10 U's, 8 V's, 8 W's, 4 X's, 11 Y's, 27 commas, 23 apostrophes, 7 hyphens, and last but not least, a single exclamation point. I will not count. I am sure you have done your work very carefully there. Uh, I'll count the comments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 commas. Indeed. Very well done. The number two is simple to describe. It is the only even prime number. It is the smallest natural number whose square root is irrational. Can all natural numbers be described so easily? Are their numbers so large or so mundane that to describe them in under 100 characters would be impossible? Surely not. Such a set of indescribable natural numbers must have at least element. And such a number could be described quite succinctly. The smallest natural number which cannot be described in under 100 characters. Well, that's only 77. Thus, any natural number can be described in fewer than 100 characters. And yet, there are only finitely many characters. And only finitely many ways to arrange up to 100 of them. But the set of natural numbers is endless. How then can finitely many arrangements uniquely describe infinitely many numbers? Well, it's a very good question. Homological, erudite, word, noun, short, polysyllabic, sesquipedalian, magniloquent, Hellenic, homological, heterological? Heterological, benighted, number, verb, long, monosyllabic, onomatopoeia, homological, heterological? If you guess at random, what's the probability of answering this multiple choice question correctly? Well, if there was one correct answer, then uh, it would be 25%. But there are two answers that say 25%, therefore there are two correct answers, so the correct answer is B, 50%. But unfortunately now there's only one correct answer, so the chance of, because uh, there's only one that says 50%, so the chance of guessing correctly is now 25%. But then neither of those work, so clearly if both of those turn out to be wrong as soon as you've chosen them, C, 0% is the right answer. Therefore, your choice of guessing correctly is 25%. <laughs> Euathlos was a gifted student with a passion for law but no finances to pursue a degree in legal studies. A respected legal scholar, Protagoras, saw the talent this young boy possessed and made him a proposition. Uh, you are Thulus, my boy. You have all the skills necessary to become a very successful lawyer. I know you don't have any money now, but I'll teach you on one condition. When you win your first court case, you must pay me 10,000 drachmas. Ecstatic Euathlos eagerly took the old man up on his offer. Euathlos's talent did not disappoint. He quickly became one of the sharpest legal minds Athens had ever known. However, as his studies wore on, it dawned on him that his heart was simply not in it. He completed his studies with record-sitting marks, but decided not to become a lawyer thereby precluding the possibility that he would ever win a court case. How could you turn your back on such a promising career? Furious Protagoras demanded of him, to which Euathlos only shrugged meekly. Not to be cheated out of his paycheck, Protagoras devised a scheme. He would sue Euathlos for the 10,000 drachmas he was owed for his efforts. It was a win-win, he reasoned. 
If the gods sided with him, Euathlos would be forced to pay the money. If not, then Euathlos would have won his first case, in which case he would have to pay the money as well. Congratulations, Tapper. The mission is nearly complete. This is a truly a remarkable feat. Given the mission's theme, self-reference, I'd consider myself remiss, or perhaps even dense, if I opted to allow for the final curtain call to take place before finally breaking the fourth wall. I hope you found my mission most delightfully meta. Think I want your feedback? You'd better betcha. So if you have helpful tips onto which I might glom, please send them to trefoilnot.taffa at gmail.com. It was just such a treat creating this mission for you. I can't wait to get started on mission number two. Codex of Bertrand's Essence. Right, now we need to have to escape back the streets. This was mission number one. Was, was Heist at Hilbert's High Rise Hotel really mission number two? Right, we need to reset this. Make sure any future taffers heading this way that we find here. Competition. Do not find any obvious signs. Oh, you know what? Will it fit? Can I make it fit? Can I just... It looks like it will fit. Perfect. I've cleared out the horns for them, and that can't be helped, but, uh... We can make sure... They will firstly never get in there, they're not that smart. Secondly... If they do get in there, they will have nothing to find. I guess I can read his his uh, his notes. We will take the other notes with us. Oh, well, that's not the whole projection. Hmm. Always tidy up after yourself. Is this the way to the whole projection? Stairs that go quiet because of the angle that. Oh yes, I already locked it. All right. Well, they'll never think to look here for the key. I do want to check out the assistant's room, just out of curiosity. Um, I guess I'm never going to get up there. Let's leave that as a puzzle for uh, future taffers. Like this one. Mislead them into climbing on the rafters when there's no longer anything up there anything up there worth having. Or hopefully nothing up there at all. Let's see. How does this work? Ask me for hint about gate one. Ask me for hint about gate two, gate three, and ask me for general hints. <sighs> what? Take the holy water and it hurts. I mean, how do you how do we even ask you for hints? Am I supposed to spend the holy water? Hello. Hints, please. I got hurt. Oh well, fuck you too. Ouch. Ah. Let's say here is a. Uh... Can I drop the key inside? Oh, 
inside the locked room. Well, I can still reach it through the door. But it is self-referential. So in a kind of way. So it seems a fitting way to leave it. All right, was this the way out? Back to the streets. Farewell, bad friend. We have unrestricted comp comprehension. I knew I missed some loot. Uh, that's 215 I missed. That's surely more than one piece. Um, guess there are other bits high up out of reach that I didn't find. But that was Bertrand's Forgotten Tomb. But thanks very much for watching. I hope you'll join me here next time for the next mission, whatever it happens to be.